Hey everybody, Questwise back here again from the Desk of Doom. Uh, I apologize if my voice is a little weird and cracky today. I'm kind of getting over a whatever, a cold or a allergies or whatever season it is right now here in Michigan. But uh, today I wanted to talk about uh, inspiration and imagination in role-playing games and in a little project that I'm working on that's kind of sort of a cross-genre sort of a, a thing that's going on. So what I really truly love about role-playing games, traditional tabletop role-playing games, is that 95% of the game is absolutely free. Sure, you need to buy a rule book, and and role playing the best type of role playing is that beautiful blend of rules that don't seem to get in the way that have sort of build a sort of structure, a a framework for you to play your games in, and this wonderful place of imagination that can be drawn from anything, be it real life, or books, or movies, or music even. Now, while you can run a game with just a couple of dice in your imagination. And in fact, I've even seen legends like Frank Menser play an entire game with just a single D6 roll. There are, I believe that there's a, there's that place where there's a nice, there needs to be a nice blend of a structure of framework, framework of rules. So that everybody's on the same page as to what's going on. And that nice addition of, imagination and shared storytelling that goes on with that weird intro that I just gave you let me tell you about a little bit of what I'm doing here what it, what it is this project that I'm working on now this video itself and the project that I'm kind of working on is inspired by questing beast who is another youtuber out there who does tabletop role-playing uh, he also talks, he does a lot of these great little reviews on very rare, small press, um, things you would never hear of before. And, and most most importantly, the, the, his review of the Slumbering Ursine Dunes that I just watched. I think he just put it up a couple of days ago. And I'm, I, I was really inspired by watching his video because that there's just something out there that there's, there's, there's a collective sort of imagination amongst role players that... Uh, it, you don't have to be a you don't have to be part of a major company to write an amazing campaign or amazing adventure sets that have the same if not better quality than some of the stuff that's out there in the market right now that's being put out by Wizards of the Coast or or or, or Paizo or you know whoever it might be that there are you know just people out there who are writing amazing things and that's why this is what this video is kind of written or kind of created about because of something I've been I've been writing and working on as well. This is not anything that I will probably ever in fact I I will never publish this only because um I'm sure there's copyright infringement in some part of this. Um but let me show you what's going on. I'm as a profession I'm a bookseller uh, for an independent bookstore. And so sometimes I get privy to things called uh, ARCs. We call them ARCs in the industry. Advanced reading copies of books, uh, which are are books that are put out usually in paperback format, uh, in a cheaper format, uh, before they're actually published and available to the public. Now, this book is available to the public, and I highly, highly recommend that you go out and get a copy of this if you haven't read this already. But this is my advanced reading copy of The Lost City of the Monkey God. This is by Douglas Preston. He's part of the duo of Preston and Child uh, thriller writer team. This is a nonfiction book about uh, an exploration in Honduras uh, where there was a the legend of the white city or the lost city of the monkey god, as the title aptly proclaims. And having read this through this once and then going back through it again and highlighting, I've been, been taking notes and highlighting different passages and stuff i was really really inspired to make this into some sort of an, an adventure for a tabletop role-playing game when i sat down to try to figure out what game would best fit this i couldn't narrow it down so i'm currently writing three adventures using inspiration and imagination from just this one book now this is a true 
This covers a, a, a decades and decades of research, of exploration, of curses, of traps, of poisonous snakes, uh, and you know, and in search for this missing part of the world, missing civilizations, lost ruins that we're so driven as people uh, in our desire to try to discover these these things that. Um, we seek seek these things out, and and we're fascinated by these ideas of, of of cultures that are no longer around, and so that's what the story of this book is about. When I sat down again, like I said, I sat down to try to figure out what what um, what game it was that I wanted to do this in. I came down to three. Now the first one probably will seem pretty, maybe pretty obvious. It was pretty obvious to me. Uh, but the first game that, that uh, came up about was Call of Cthulhu, 7th edition. Um, I think that this makes perfect sense. I think that this game f fits that book very, very well. In that I want to make it a horror story. I want to make it a story about lots and lots of research and lots and lots of planning and about a visiting exotic, <clears throat> excuse me, there's those, those yuckiness. Anyway, I want this to be a game about visiting exotic locales and gathering intelligence and visiting libraries and reading journals of past adventurers. I want it to be a game of, that's highly deadly with elements of horror and exploration and not about combat and and you know hacking your way through you know various flanks of enemies call of cthulhu does that very very well if you want a game about research and discovery and exploration to a degree call of cthulhu to do that very well and the lost city of the monkey god the book itself there's such a wide variety of 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 things in there from exploration and research and reading lost journals and, and, and hieroglyphics and trying to tie clues together that it fits this game very, very well. And I think that by writing a sort of sort of horror ending to this and, and maybe a discovery of why the civilization is no longer there and why it disappeared would make a beautiful, beautiful Call of Cthulhu um, adventure or mini campaign. I'm thinking it's not, it's going to be longer than just one session. So probably a mini campaign, maybe three or four sessions as well. So Call of Cthulhu was my very first thought on that. Now it's also very Indiana Jones-ish. It's very much that style of, of, of exploration where you're hacking through a jungle and you're overcoming obstacles and, you know, sir, you, you're, you're carving out a canoe and, and, and cruising down a, a, a river through the middle of the jungle and you're fighting off jungle cats and stuff. So the second most obvious game that popped up was Savage Worlds. For the second part of the adventure, or the second adventure that I'm writing, based on that same book, Savage Worlds is going to cover that for me. Savage Worlds is going to give me that very pulpy action, more Indiana Jones, less CSI, less research. I want Daring Do with lots of chances, and I want lots of over-the-top action. I want... Swinging from vines, I want fighting off native populations. Savage Worlds is going to give me that. So, Savage Worlds is going to be the second part, the second adventure based upon Lost City of the Monkey God. For those people who want to play very sort of like action packed, pulpy exploration, you know rediscovering lost civilizations the ending probably won't have a sort of horror theme we're not going to be trying to discover why the civilization disappeared we might be fighting off some kind of crazy you know cultist slash monkey worshippers kind of thing whatever it might be i haven't gotten that far yet i actually haven't written much down i just have some basic ideas of how i want to use each game to run a different adventure based on one book uh, the third one might be a little bit of a stretch, but you know what? I thought if there's any game out there that can handle it, let's give it a fantasy flip and do some Palladium fantasy role-playing. 
I want to take this and I want to put this in the Yin Sloth jungle, which is kind of the uh, the the jungle region of of Palladium, and I want to. I want to. I want to see if I can make the idea, the idea of of a lost civilization in the middle of a uh, you know densely overgrown area, can make it work in a fantasy game. And and instead of being more of a game about exploration, which it will have some, and about research, or a game that's more about daring do, I'm now going to populate that area with crazy over the top monsters. For fantasy, so it'll be sort of a dungeon crawl in a jungle setting, inside of ruins that maybe cover you know miles underground tunnels, and are filled with a multitude of crazy creatures, and then the monkey god himself is an actual creature, an actual monster um, that kind of harkens back to things like Robert Howard's crazy Conan adventures or. Uh, you know, God knows what, but some very cool, I'm going to populate the entire area with crazy monsters and make it a very fantasy-esque setting. And I think that Palladium will do that very well. I want to throw in some, like, rune weapons, man. I want some crazy, like, lost civilization rune weapons, and I love runic weapons in Palladium fantasy. They've always captured my imagination. I thought they were really cool. So those are the three games. And I want to, I want to write one single adventure in each using the ideas I've, I've, I've gleaned from this one book. This one true story of a book that you can buy any major or your favorite retailers. Um, I, I think that the, the, it's, it's inspiration can be found from a multitude of places for role-playing, and I think that's the best part. That's my favorite part about role-playing, is that you can draw inspiration for games and a multitude of games, mini adventures, or excuse me, adventures or mini campaigns in a multitude of different games um, from whatever source it might be, be it a comic book, be it uh, a movie or a play or a whatever. Uh, that's that's my that's the part about role playing games that keeps me interested, that, that keeps me a true fan, very passionate about the hobby over and over and over again brings me back to the table all the time is that once you buy this once you get this kind of stuff once you pick up this kind of things and again i cannot say enough about savage worlds i cannot say how wonderful and i've never met any of these guys from this company i've talked to a few of them online uh and on facebook and such but and it seemed like really great people, but it's not so much about the people behind the book, but the product itself, the people that, that put out this product. I think it's a great business model that you can buy this book for $10, and this book alone will drive your hobby for years and years and years because it's this little slim book and what's in here and what's in here that drives the hobby forward. There's nothing I've found and nothing sort of, no sort of genre, no sort of idea that I haven't thought of that I don't think Savage Worlds could could not handle. I think that this game, it, it's so flexible enough that it can run just about anything that you can imagine. And I can imagine quite a bit. So I hope you liked this video. I just want to tell you about the little bit of project I'm working on. But I also wanted to pass along the things to you that, that really invigorate me about role-playing games and the fact that it's really about passion. It's really about imagination and an inspiration of that imagination from whatever source it might be. And in a little bit of what uh, where I got my inspiration from for these three adventures that I'm writing right now. If you ever happen to be at a convention and I'm happen that I happen to be at, uh, or if you ever be at, happen to be in the northern Michigan area, uh, hit me up. Throw me a link in the, or throw me a, a comment in the in the list below, and uh, I would love to get together with you and, and share this adventure with you. So until next time, I'm Questwise, and we're out. <laughs>